They started brewing in September 2018 and there at the third floor of the Warsaw Beer Festival in 2019. I met them. They had very juicy and fruity beers. Welcome, Michael from Funky Fluid. How are you doing? Hello, hello, everybody. I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? Yeah. All right. Tell me, uh, Funky Fluid, uh, a Polish brewery. Um, your vision with Funky Fluid, is it funky or is it extreme in taste? Say again? Is your vision of Funky Fluid uh, funky or more extreme? <laughs> well, it's just a um, um, funny story about the name. Um, sometimes people ask me guys, if, it's, um, if we brew only the funky beers. Obviously, that's uh, not the case. So we basically, when we thought about the name, for our brewery, we wanted something different. Um, in Poland, uh, there's a lot of uh, names come from hops, or you know, growing like hop, hoppy, uh, hop beer, hoppy, something else. And it's, we wanted to to be slightly different. We didn't want to any um, hoppy or hop names in, 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 in our. Um, and our logo as well is different. We didn't want to green hop cones in a, in the logo. So we um, we find that find out that this name and and we thought it's it's fun and that's why it's fun to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I know the most beers of you is you have a lot of IPAs. You also have a, a pilsner, a stout, a sour. Um, tell me a bit, for the people who are watching in Poland, there was not really a tradition of IPAs and those type of beers. Poland has more tradition of uh, German-style lagers. Is that correct? Well, it used to be that, like, like that. Obviously, um, like international lager I was uh, the main beer which we drew uh, before revolution. Uh, but since the revolution, beer revolution started uh, in Poland, we grew pretty much uh, every style. And uh, like, for example, I, I have uh, no alcoholic fruit IPA at this moment. Um, and it's, uh, I think we, we, we grew pretty much all the styles which are available and we create we, uh, the new styles and the mixing and uh, so um, but. Funky Fluid is best known for, for the IPAs, the whole range of IPAs. So, um, West Coast, uh, you know, uh, the whole range of New England IPAs, that's basically what, what we are kind of uh, very well known for. Um, also, the last series of um, uh, pastry sours, that's actually going very well. And, um, so yeah, but we we we, we grow pretty much uh, uh, everything. I mean, uh, we we do we have uh, in our offer the things now uh, wheat beer, classical one like uh, Whiting or uh, with, with fruits, um, American wheat. Uh, um, we brew porter, uh, stouts, imperial stouts, um, uh, brown ale, um, sour beers. So. Yeah, quite, quite a lot of stuff. Uh, last, uh, well, a few months ago, actually, we released um, in Grudziska. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Grudziska is uh, it's, uh, like a typical, um, uh, typical, uh, the, well, on, one and only truly Polish style because it comes from from the city called uh, Grodzisk, Mazowiecki. Um, in uh, Mazowiecki. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so um, it's a it's a it's a wheat beer, uh, small wheat beer. Yeah. So not very the common, not very popular, but um, yeah. we've done it as well. And Poland is now following the international beer trends, also. Eh? Like you mentioned, all the styles above; um, those are now very popular uh, in Poland. I'm sorry, I, I just have to. Cancel my other windows because that's, someone tried to call me. <laughs> okay, 
I'm back. Sorry. Um, yes, you, you, uh, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, Polut is now following the international beer styles and trends. Um, is that one of your unique selling points, what you try to achieve with Funky Fluids? Um, being on top of uh, the trends of the international beer scene? Uh, yes, pretty much. Well, um, you know, the revolution that goes with waves, right? <laughs> and <laughs> yes. um, there are certain times where the, 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 uh, the beers are, uh, some of the beers are more uh, popular, popular than others, right? A few years ago, uh, for example, West Coast was uh, quite common. Uh, in these days, in the IPA world, uh, that's uh, New England, which is uh, the big. Um, so, um, well, the Polish craft scene uh, doesn't really, uh, it's very similar to, I would say, uh, craft beer scene in the world. So, pretty much, we're following the, the same. Uh, Kind of uh, trends which are in states or in, in Europe and um, uh... and tell me a bit um, in 2018 how did you start uh, brewing? I assume you have a different background uh, than being a brewer. Well, yes. I mean, I'm a photographer actually, <laughs> <laughs> and um, but uh, in 2016. I opened my first small brewery, Wangir Beer. And uh, at the time, it was really small production. And uh, I met uh, Carol, my uh, uh, business partner, my friend uh, at this moment. And he, he's um, uh, the owner as well of the, with me of uh, Funky Trade. So, uh, we we meet up and uh, we start talking about to, to create something uh, together, the new brewery, and that's how it started actually. Yeah. And now you you still have your own brewery, or you brew funky fluid at uh, different brewery installations now? That's right. Well, we haven't got our own brewery. We are a different uh, brewery. Uh, on, in the Polish street, <laughs> craft beer scene, we've been known for some crazy things. Like uh, there was a time when we had uh, we, we've been brewing beer in uh, thirteen breweries. So that was uh, that was actually very extreme, and uh, that was a challenge. Obviously, uh, not all all of them were quite big. There were pretty much uh, half of them uh, really small uh, breweries, but. We'll be doing a lot of uh, collaboration, uh, cooperation with um, other breweries, uh, and um, but we're brewing uh, constantly in a few breweries. So um, at this moment, they are four. Yeah. What What was the impact of the current pandemic crisis for Funky Fluids? Um, you needed to can more, or there was more demand in shops, or you lowered down the volume. Well, um, obviously, for everybody, the whole the pandemic situation, mm, it, it affected us a little bit, but not as much as I thought it, it, it's going to be. So, um, first of all, uh, at the beginning of the, of the year, we, we received um, the prize of the, we've been voted by the um, rate users as a per the best new breweries in the world. So that congrats. Must be happy. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And that must be helps us uh, with um, exporting our beers. You know, people starting started asking us, you know, uh, to ship our beer to many different countries, and um, uh, so. That was actually um, quite a big relief because um, I don't know if you know, but uh, in Poland, basically, there's not really uh, legal to sell the um, alcohol online. And um, so <laughs> we, we couldn't actually do it. This is really strange, but um, I think we only one country in, in Europe uh, where we cannot do it. I mean, there is a 
I think Estonia maybe or Latvia, I can't remember, which is normally is not allowed, but during the pandem- pandemic time, uh, they could sell um, the beer online. We still cannot in Poland. I mean, we've got a few shops, I think, probably three. Uh, but it's kind of, it's not really like 100% legal. Um, but they find some way to do it. I don't know. You know, the law is complicated in Poland, uh, and uh, to be honest, nobody knows exactly. And and the official, they, they they saying okay, it's not legal, but but it's not legal too. <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it, it's weird. So uh, we we started to selling our beer abroad, and um, we've been thinking about the canning before. But uh, the problem was uh, actually still exists in Poland. Um, basically, most of the um, brewers they, they, they have bottling line. Mm-hmm. There's no many canning lines in, in Polish brewery, so um, that's uh, that was a little bit uh, challenge. But now the situation is changing. Uh, we started canning on the mobile uh, canning line, and the beer actually. It was in the same time when we released our new um, series uh, called Gelato. One can here. It's basically a uh, pasty sour uh, with lots of fruits. And uh, the, the receive of, the, of that beer was really good. It was really great. And we only put that beer in a uh, can. So um, that's actually um, changed a little bit uh, the thinking of the uh, Polish um, consumers because uh, m- most of them actually are pre- uh, bottles. But uh, the, during the funding time when uh, some shops started to selling uh, cans, um, that actually helped uh, realize that First of all, the quality of the beer is really good. Uh, for the IPAs, the cans are much better than bottles. Uh, other things, uh, you know, the, all the transportation, uh, basically, if you cannot break the uh, can, that, well, it's much more difficult to, to break it than bottles. Uh, also, the weight is much the cans weight, like, I don't know, 53 grams or something like that. Uh, when the bottles are much heavier, so and um, so we start canning, and uh, the cans are actually starting quite well in, in Poland, and uh, also we pretty much all the uh, export is in cans because the the, the, the whole Europe, uh, not only when we send it to beer, uh, are prefer cans than bottles. Yeah. Do you also export uh, cakes? Yes, we do. Um, we export in cakes as well. The basic is um, cakes and uh, the peiners. The peiners is like similar to key cakes, but uh, slightly different construction. Uh, and uh, yes, so we, we, we export as well. Um, but the cakes are mainly going to on in Europe. Yeah, yeah, right. But to be clear, most of your export now is to where which top three countries? Top three countries. Well, to be no, uh, to be honest, I don't know <laughs> exactly because actually I'm a brewer, and uh, Carol, which is my uh, the owner of Funky Food, is, um, he works with them, um, you know, the selling department. If I can say. Uh, um, but I would say probably at, um, at this moment, I think, well, there's a few countries which are um, ordering on a regular basis. It's uh, basically Belgium, Holland or Netherlands, uh, Denmark, sending to Italy as well, Czech Republic, uh, Lithuania. Uh, Sweden and, and and China. That's quite a big market for us as well. China. 
Yeah. Okay, of all places. How mm-hmm. how is it to get uh, foot on the ground in China as a Polish brewer? Well, uh, it started quite. Um, we've been talking with uh, some uh, distributors over there uh, for quite a long time, and uh, to be honest, I I, I, um, I wasn't sure if it's gonna happen. Uh, but after a long few months, uh, actually we 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 make the deal and um, and uh, by the volume, I, I think. Very quite covered that's number one at this moment. So uh, China is actually, you know, China is, is a huge market, right? So, um, of course. So uh, yeah, and uh, we have uh, two distributors, so which we've been talking uh, about it, and at this moment we work with uh, pretty much uh, one guy who is kind of representing us in China. Yeah, cool. What are some uh, collaboration beers that you um, have now on your shelf that you're going to make in the future? Uh, well, yeah. Last year we, we had a lot of collaboration with other breweries. Um, this year, on the beginning, uh, it was looking really good. Um, we had some international collaboration plans. But uh, obviously, the pandemic time it, it changed massively everything. Uh, so we have to can't, well, not, not cancel it, but uh, basically postpone um, the uh, international collaboration. But we work uh, on a regular basis with the um, Old Garden Brewery, a very good brewery, yeah, of course, Poland. and um, also. Nepomucen Brewery, that's a, that's a brewery which we, one of the breweries when we uh, brew our beers. And uh, lately we just uh, released a beer with Pinta. Pinta is uh, probably, well, not probably, it's definitely the biggest craft beer uh, brewery uh, from Poland. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we released uh, our uh, beer. Uh, Called um, it called Collab. Yeah. Did you also uh, brew some Belgium style beers? If yes, which? Well, uh, we had uh, something similar to, to the wheat beer. Uh, it wasn't exactly wheat beer, but basically it was white IPA. And um, we had in our plans. Uh, to do saison uh, and the, at this moment we made uh, the Flanders red ale but it's uh, basically maturing in the, in the wooden barrels so it's going to be released probably well we'll see how it goes but uh, I would say uh, next year yeah because we we, we, we put up here I think it was probably February, so it needs some time. Uh, what is the hardest thing for a brewer that doesn't have his own brewery for you? Uh, well, um, because we, we brew in four different breweries, for me, for example, it's very difficult to, to, to keep an eye and everything um, because I have to travel a lot between the breweries and I, I cannot be in the same time in a, four different breweries. So that's the challenging, that's the difficult. Um, and uh, that's why we, we kind of are um, uh, working very closely with the guys from the breweries and I trying to be as many times and as, as much as possible uh, Look after our beers in the in the brewery. So um, that's some difficulties. Another thing is uh, with um, uh, logistics because um, basically we we cannot ship that our beer from one place uh, because we brew <laughs> in the four different breweries. So we have to think about it how to uh, 
sorry, that's this, 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 this problem. And mainly, uh, for example, our mix um, pockets, which are going abroad. Uh, so we have to first send to, to Warsaw because we, we are from Warsaw. We have a small warehouse here and we are repacking them and, and basically funding from here. Um, tell me a bit, in the beginning of uh, Funky Fluid, how was it to sell your first beer in Poland? Was it difficult um, also to sell them outside Warsaw? Yes, I mean, at this moment, I can imagine um, uh, everywhere in Poland, uh, obviously, well, not everywhere, <laughs> but main, main cities definitely are constantly in, in uh, coffee shops, uh, doctor shops, and uh, in the pubs. Um, and uh, our first beer was actually quite well because, um, as I said before, I had a small brewery before. So, Carol, uh, my uh, co-owner of, of uh, Frank Floyd, uh, was basically working uh, even longer than me because he was uh, working, I don't know, I think. Uh, several years or maybe even more than 10 actually um, selling the craft beer so uh, we've been known in the uh, industry a little bit and uh, when we released our first beer so we we made some uh, basically some 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 buzz before about it and um, uh, so it, it wasn't like wasn't a surprise for uh, um, some people who kind of expected that we're gonna release uh, uh, our beer that we um, we just started with a new brewery and um, so it was quite well. But um, uh, what I'm very pleased about it is basically um, funky fluid kind of grow very very quickly. And um, uh, I even didn't expect that it's going to be that, that way. Uh, we, we, we've been constantly increasing our uh, volume and the uh, varieties of beer and uh, quality as well, obviously. Are you now, let's say, on the maximum capacity of your growth? Are you like, all right, it's good, slow down a bit and let's first see that we more have more control about logistics and stuff or is it is there still mm -hmm. room to grow now oh definitely it is um we actually been talking with uh, carol today um uh, there are some new opportunities for, for us um, for the near future and um uh, to be honest with you we we kind of at this moment back to the pandemic uh, volume um Mm. And but that is definitely uh, the room to, to grow and uh, to, to expand a bit more. We've got so many, uh, you know, inquiries uh, from craft beer places, from bars, from uh, distributors. So the actual situation looks uh, very good for for the future. Yeah. Um, let's say. Tomorrow you can make a deal with a big supermarket to put your beer on their shelves. Would you do it? Well, uh, I mean, we at this moment with some supermarkets because um, um, the whole um, sale of craft beer slowly actually turning from the small bottle shops to bigger um, supermarkets. And... Uh, Basically, the situation of some craft beer shops were not that actually cool uh, before the pandemic time. Uh, they had some difficulties. Um, and uh, the pandemic time actually helped them uh, quite a lot because um, obviously the bars were closed, but people cannot go for the pint, you know, um, to the bar and they've been buying the, the beer in the shops. And uh, that's really uh, crazy thing. But um, I spoke to the few owners of the bottle shops, and they said that they never had that. They never sell that many beers uh, like in, uh, in the pandemic time. So um, 
Uh, yeah, the, the business actually is kind of uh, blooming for them at this moment. But we are in some uh, small quantities in a, in a, in a few supermarkets. Uh, we've got the Carrefour in Poland, uh, Auchan, and uh, I think it's Leclerc, the third one. But um, that's not our, our whole, whole range, right? We, we, we have like, uh, I think, uh, five hour beers uh, uh, available in, uh, in the supermarkets. Uh, and obviously, we, we, because we really think constantly new beers, especially the IPAs, uh, the, the basic sellers. Uh, um, so, well, we, I think at this moment, kind of actually on the beat, we, we brewed, but <laughs> it's uh, well over 100, I think, 130, something like that. And we only, you know, not even two years on the market. So, we can, you know, very productive. And, um, the, 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 most of our beers actually goes to uh, bars and uh, and, uh, and the bottle shops, especially um, uh, shops. But some of our beers are available in the supermarket. Yeah. Are there any plans to make smaller bottles or smaller cans? So away from the Polish side's half a liter to more 33 centilitre? Yes, we uh, we're gonna release soon uh, one of our beer in uh, 440 cans, and also we had some inquiries about uh, 350. Um, we didn't start with 350 on the beginning because in Poland actually the 350 it doesn't sell for very well, and uh, everybody preferred a half liter. Um, the, Slightly different situations in, uh, you know, in, uh, in Europe, um, where uh, distributors prefer a little bit smaller, um, uh, you know, quantities volume. So, um, but uh, it's possible. Uh, not everywhere. We got um, it's some technical difficulties. Uh, but uh, we, we have uh, two brewery, breweries when we can do it, and uh, probably we're gonna do it in uh, another two months. For some beers of the portfolio, of course. Yes, of course, absolutely. No, no, not everything. I mean, even now we we started canning, and then the cans are selling very well. We are very happy about the quality and. Uh, Thing, but um, not everything is goes uh, go the, into the cans. We're still producing bottles, and uh, especially for the supermarket, they actually actually prefer bottles. So, um, and uh, our kind of um, everyday, everyday <laughs> beer are available in bottles, like our basic APA and um, fruit beer, sour beer. And um, another, which is pretty much all the time uh, in our offer, it's um, foreign extra stuff. Yeah. yeah, but now we, we're going to uh, release soon uh, in cans, pastry stout and um, uh, breakfast porter. Uh, sorry, a stout. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what is a beer that we could never expect from uh, Funky Fluid? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> never say never? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think, you know, there's not such a beer. We made, uh, you know, uh, so many different beers. I mean, even like uh, in Age, uh, the Pinhead uh, Stouts, um, uh, uh, Grzyska, you know, it's not common beer, um, with some weird adjuncts. Um, so, you know, I think that will be the day when we probably uh, we'll be uh, having our offer or not all the time, but uh, 
uh, all, all the all the all the beers varieties. I mean, I don't know. We might be Vienna lager or something. Or all, never gonna happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, where do you see Poland uh, ranked, according to other European countries, in craft beer uh, within the next five years? Well, it's difficult to say, um, but the, the craft beer scene uh, is growing very well and is is is, is blooming. Uh, is, we we had. Um, a really big, uh, you know, step forward, and the, uh, our expansion is quite, uh, quite rapid, I would say, because uh, you know everything started for us. I think it was 2011, uh, or maybe, yeah, something like that. So uh, at this moment, we can go to the shop um, and buy what you like. I mean, every kind of style. Uh, from, uh, I think it's like more than 300 breweries at the moment in Poland, but um, we producing more than two and a half thousand beers a year, I and mean, the new beer, new releases. So, um, yeah, and the Polish scene is uh, very well known for the new beers. We The, the brewery is constantly brewing new beers, trying something new. We had just a uh, Maybe I don't know five or six uh, beers which we uh, brew constantly, and um, others like ninety-eight percent of our beers is a it, it's it's a new beer all the time. So uh, you know, and we experimenting, uh, we trying new things. So I think uh, the future looks good for the Polish craft beer scene. Cool. Some very nice last words. Thank you so much for the interview, Michael from Funky Fluid. Hope to see you guys soon in uh, another Polish beer festival. Well, definitely. I'll, I wish it's going to be soon. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. It depends on the gov government situation, the healthy situation. Uh, well, no, not only in Poland, but pretty much in in a whole Europe, right? Yeah, same by us here. Maybe maybe we have the Christmas beer festival in Belgium. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay. See you. Thank you very much. <laughs>